For this tutorial, we'll explore the various uses of markers and regions. We'll start with markers. Markers are used to mark a specific time or point in the project that you want to be able to quickly locate at a later time. Markers can be seen just above the ruler bar. This area is called the marker list. In the project, we see there are five markers in the list. To quickly locate the cursor to a marker, press the number associated with the marker using the number keys across the top of your keyboard. For instance, press the number 2. Notice the cursor is now located at the marker. Press play to play from that marker. Next we'll set a marker. Press the home key to move your cursor to the beginning of the project. Press M to set a marker. Marker number 6 is set to the beginning of the project. Markers become more useful if you label them to help you remind you of what their purpose is. Double click on marker number 6. The marker name text box opens. Since this marks the introduction to the music, click to the right of the number 6 to place your cursor. Press the spacebar and type intro in the text box and click OK. You now see the marker label has changed to 6 intro. Double click marker number 1 and replace the number 1 with the words second phrase of intro. Notice it no longer has the original marker number 1 in the label. Press 6 to locate to the intro marker, then press 1 to locate to the marker that we just named second phrase of intro. Pressing number 1 on your keyboard no longer works because we overwrote the number 1 in the marker label. Click the Regions List tab at the bottom of the SoundForge window. You now see a list of all the markers. Click the checkbox next to the marker labeled second phrase of the intro. Notice the cursor moves to that marker. Press play to play from that marker. Right click on the marker label and choose Rename. Notice the name of the marker in the Regions List window is now highlighted and ready to be renamed. Put the number 1 and a space in front of the text and press Enter to accept the change. Press the number 4 to locate the marker 4. Then press 1 to locate to the marker labeled second phrase of the intro. There's an advantage to having both numbers and labels for the markers. You can navigate between markers even as the file is playing. Start playback and press 4, then 2, then 1, then 5 to quickly jump from marker to marker as playback continues. You can add markers even as the project is playing. This is a good way to add markers on the fly and then refine its placement later. Marker number 4 marks the beginning of an 8-beat phrase. We'll drop a marker on the fly to mark the second 4-beat phrase. Locate to marker 4, start playback, and count along to the beat. Press M when you get to the downbeat of the second half of that phrase. Now, unless you've had your coffee, you might not have placed the marker exactly on the downbeat. No problem. You can move markers anytime and anywhere you want. Move the mouse wheel away from you to zoom in. It's very easy to see where the beat starts. Click and drag the marker to the spike in the waveform that represents the downbeat. If you no longer need a marker, you can delete it. Right click on the marker 7 and choose Delete. There are several different marker types to choose from and they have very specific functions. Place the cursor at the silence between the first two waveforms. At the very bottom of the SoundForge window, you see several buttons. Hover over the button labeled M. The tooltip tells us this button will place a standard marker, the same as typing M on the keyboard. Click the marker button, a new marker with a new number appears at the cursor position. Move the cursor to the beginning of the second waveform and hover over the next marker button labeled T. The tooltip says Set CD Track Index. Click the button and notice that two markers have been added, one where the cursor was placed and one at the beginning of the file. SoundForge knows you have to have a marker at the beginning of the CD and places a marker there for you automatically. These markers are used by the CD player to locate and move to the different tracks on the CD. Move the cursor to the right and click the button labeled S for Set CD Sub-Index. These markers enable you to locate the points between the track markers. Move the cursor to the right and click the button labeled P for Set CD Pause Index. 
These markers allow CD players to switch their output to absolute silence until the next track marker. Move the cursor to the end of the file and click the button labeled E for Set CD End Index. This marker marks the end of the CD. The next two buttons, M and right arrow, and M and left arrow, will move you to the next or previous marker. Here's a tip. Control plus left or right arrow will also do this and is a handy keyboard shortcut for navigating between markers. A region is also a type of marker. We've seen that markers mark a specific point in time. Regions mark a range of time. Click and drag to select the third waveform in the file. Press R on your keyboard. This creates a region and gives it a number, in this case number 2, since we already have a marker labeled 1. Just like markers, you can navigate to the range of time they represent by typing their number. Type 1 to jump to marker 1, and then type 2 to jump to region 2. As you locate to the number 2 region marker, it also highlights the time range defined by the region marker. Double either one of the number 2 region markers and name the region third track. Remember to leave the original number so you can still navigate to the region by typing its number. Click and drag either of the region markers to change the start and end points of the region. Double click in the marker list between the two region markers to select that time range. 